Hello everyone and welcome to Flip Teacher Professional Learning Video 6. In this video we are going to continue looking at how to use Google Docs in the classroom following on from video 5. Uh, so if you haven't watched that, I strongly recommend that you go back and that you do watch that video. Now you may remember from video 5 that we began with a writing task. Um, I dropped some text into a Google Doc. I then shared it uh, via email using the Google Docs share function uh, to my teacher, to Mr. Mitchell, uh, in order to get some feedback on my writing. So what we are going to look at now is the next step in this, uh, which is you as the teacher being able to provide feedback to the student. So I'll just bring up the document here. So this is the document that I have submitted as the student. Uh, this is the writing task. You can see writing task for Mr. M up here in the top left hand corner is the title. You can see that it's been saved and you can see that it's been shared with one person. Now at the moment, I'm the only person that's viewing this document. But this is a live document, so as a teacher, you can view it at the same time and provide live feedback to your students. So what I'm going to do next is bring up my Google Drive as the teacher. Now this document is not something that I have created as a teacher. This is not something that Mr. Mitchell has created. This is a document that the student has created. So the document will not appear in this section because this is my drive and these are things that I've made. The document that's been shared to me will appear in this tab here, shared with me. So I'm looking for writing task for Mr. M, which is that one there. I'll double click on that to open it up. That takes a moment to load. Now you can see straight away that there's something a little bit different. There's this green icon here, which says that I am suggesting something. And up here in the right hand corner, it says suggesting. That means that the owner of the document, the student, has set it so that I can suggest changes, but I can't actually make the changes myself. Ideally, or I believe, this is how you would set it up in the classroom, because this way the students can see your suggestion and your feedback against what they've done. It gives them the opportunity to understand the difference and to have, uh, and to have that learning opportunity. You can also see there's a little image with a pink line underneath it here, and there's also a pink cursor here. That tells me that there is someone else viewing the document at the moment. By holding my mouse over the image, I can see who it is. Now look at that, it's Brendan, it's the student. Uh, and that means that I now know that we're in this document at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the appearance of this document. I'm going to shrink it so that I can have both the document as the teacher and the document as the student in the, uh, on the screen at the same time. So the top one is me suggesting is Mr. Mitchell is the teacher. The bottom one, editing, is the student. And you can see again that there's a slightly different picture there that tells me that it's the student. The pink cursor corresponds with the pink image. Tells me who's in, in the uh, tells me who's in the document. So moving along, I've gone through and I've made a few fairly basic um, spelling mistakes for the purposes of this video. What we want to do is we want to take this opportunity to give some feedback to the student so they can see uh, some changes that they might need to make in terms of spelling, in terms of grammar, um, to improve the quality of the writing. So the first thing we're going to do is really easy. Uh, as you would probably be aware, the red squiggly line underneath the word indicates that there's a spelling mistake. So straight away, we want to correct that. For some reason, the students missed it and we want to suggest to them that they make the change. So all I do here is I find the first one, reading this through contextually, you can see that it, uh, the word should be the word moon. All I need to do now is type moon, and you'll see that it appears here boxed in green, and over here on the right hand side there's a box. It tells the student what I've done. It also gives me an opportunity to provide some additional feedback. So I've told them what the change should be, and here I can tell them why. Uh, this word should be moon, not mon. Reply. Now, if I go back to this screen 
as a student, I can see the change highlighted in pink, and I can see the feedback that the teacher has given me. Now what I can do, if I think, you know what, I, I did make that mistake, I'll change that. I can click on the tick, which is accept suggestion. If I don't think it's right, I can click on the cross. I would have the conversation with your students if you are going to go down this road uh, that they should generally accept the feedback. If they disagree with it for some reason, encourage them to come and talk to you uh, so that you can explain in more detail if needed why you've made that suggestion. So I'm happy with that feedback as the student. Yep, I've made the mistake. I'm going to change that. I'm going to click on accept. And it adds that word in. Now, you can see it hasn't deleted the word mon, or the, the misspelling of mon. What I need to do is delete that manually. And there's that change made straight away. You can see it's been saved. If I go back to the screen as the teacher, the suggestion has been adopted and the change has been made. Let's have a look at a slightly different way of doing it. Another one here, we've got a homophone error. Let's double click on that word. We want to get rid of that specific word. Let's type in the correct homophone of through. And you can see here, replace through with through. And I can give some feedback here. Homophone error. Hit reply and that goes to the student. So we've told the student that this particular word is the wrong word, we need to replace it, double click to highlight, type in the correct one. Now as the student, I can go back to this screen, I can see there's a word crossed out with a pink line, I can see the a new word has appeared in pink, I can see the feedback from the teacher, I can see replace through with through and then the explanation, homophone error. You can obviously provide more feedback, uh, more detailed feedback than that if you would like. I tick it, it gets rid of the misspelled word, the homophone error, puts the correct one in. And that's done. That's really, really simple. Now let's have a look at what happens if the student rejects the feedback. So this one here, chocolate's been spelled incorrectly. Double click. Chocolate. Misspelled word. Hit reply. That feedback's now gone to the student. That's live. We're in here at the same time. I'll go back to the student screen. I can see the feedback there. And I think to myself, no, I'm actually really happy with my spelling of chocolate. I may have done it that way for a particular reason. Um, but I, I'm happy with my spelling. I, I disagree with the teacher's feedback. If they click reject, which is the cross here, all it does is it removes your feedback, your suggestion. Uh, from the text. It's really simple. It's also really powerful. I, again, I strongly recommend that you have the conversation with your students about accept and reject in terms of the suggestions, uh, that you encourage them to come and talk to you if they disagree with some feedback or some suggestions that you've given them. But this is a really powerful way of giving them feedback live. You don't need to sit down with a whole lot of books at the end of the day during recess uh, or lunchtime, whenever it is. You can give them feedback on the fly during the lesson. As they're working, uh, as they're doing their writing, you can be in viewing their documents live and giving them feedback on the go. That's all we have time for in this video. Uh, stay tuned and we'll be moving on to something new in the next video.